Good afternoon and welcome to Drag Racing Calvin Atcher from Ravenswood International Raceway. Today we present part two of the Performance Direct Nitro Double Header featuring the awesome 5,000 horsepower missiles known as Funny Cars. Alan Green and Alan Dobson in their Chev Beretta Green Machine take on the Jones Brothers, Lloyd and Graham in the incredible Dodge Daytona. The last time these two teams met was at the record-breaking Boxing Day meeting where Lloyd Jones won two wins to one. So don't be surprised to see something special this time from the Green Machine. To take us through all of the action, here are Stuart Bond and Frank Hastings. Well, thanks, Tomo, and let's start the action with top comp eliminator Trevor Morrison first out on the track with a compulsory qualifier. Morrison's car, a small block Chevrolet, supercharged and in the form of an altered sitting directly over the div centre, this car is a handful to drive. Morrison had a great season uh, last season and will be anxious to continue that form today. The car looks the part and Morrison certainly knows how to drive it hard and fast. The tree counts down. He comes out on a clean green. Morrison on his way down the quarter, a compulsory qualifier, looks like a good one, a 7.63 at 291 k. Oh, the small block swinging through the top end. Peter Hamilton's Holden Statesman, unlike any other Statesman in Australia, this one with a TFX alcohol racing engine. Alongside him, Ian Brown, the GM performance sponsored funny car. Uh, Brownie uh, racing on the top alcohol national record. We'll give a little bit of an advantage later on in elimination rounds to the sedan. But right now, heads up in the first round, which is compulsory qualifying for top cop eliminator. Peter Hamilton's top door slammer getting ready for the big one next meeting. But right now, I've got his mind on Ian Brown, and there's Brownie in the cockpit of the car. Looking very settled indeed and waiting for those green lights to go. The Lush Brothers team are right on the edge of some five-second performances. 6.0s are coming up fairly easy for them now. I don't think they're going to chase it tonight. They're just content to get down the track and be consistent. And a big lead from Brownie as he chases Hamilton, passes him 200 metres out and gets a scorcher. A 6-1-3. Brown's come out with a, a green light up to Hamilton Redlit. In qualifying rounds, the, uh, the tree doesn't matter as much as the time, and Brown's time is a beauty. Dave Simpson coming out now in the door slammer. A brand new Ford at the track and looking pretty good. And what a monster burnout. A big step up for this team from Super Sedan into top door slammer from one extreme to the other, and they're really handling it well. Competition in this ball round, Peter the new national record holder in Double B Funny Car. Simpsons top door slammer will get its hardest workout ever when uh, Victor Bray comes over to our next event, and he would love to see some fast laps tonight. Pete Bersmer on screen. Stewie Bond was in the pits and caught up with him earlier today. This well, is your first oh, event oh, out oh, since oh, the winters, oh, and you're 6.30. You've got a new national record and an index that's even tougher than that. Now, you've obviously come down today because the fuel cars are running. You're looking for a bit of traction out there. Oh, for sure. We're trying to make advantage of all these big horsepower cars, and hopefully our car will stick to the track. We're having a few drives arms, a tyre shake, so we're doing a bit of R&D today and just getting ready for the Golden State Championships next weekend or next meeting. Peter, the one thing you don't want is tyre shake uh, on the start line. It looks very dramatic, but I guess it would be a bad thing to have when you're doing 320 kilometres an hour. Yeah, for sure. That's what we've really been suffering from. About quarter track onwards, it's been the car's been a real hell thing to drive. start line the car got very very crooked gave Simpson a chance to get away and a 689 for the Falcon watch both cars very closely Beersma with a handful at the start of the track heads towards a concrete wall he thought uh, that his race may be over but look at the Falcon now a big explosion in the supercharger and uh, Dave Simpson has just found out how tough it is to race a supercharged car Barry Wood in the little tattooed Tirana up alongside him Roy Scott in the Corvette Roy Scott's car looking rather sorry after it went off the end of the track and buried the fiberglass in the grass. Quick uh, patch repair in the pit area. And the guys are fairly convinced that the car is going to hold together for tonight. One of the problems they've got, of course, too, will be the aerodynamics. 
A lot of race tape on the front of that car. Let's see if Roy Scott can get it down the quarter mile nice and straight. Roy Scott's big block Chevy funny car will be racing against Barry Wood and a mighty mouse in the Tirana. A little tiny small block, but watch it scream off the start line. Prop wheels up, the Tirana is flying. Roy Scott with a bit more torque, a slightly lighter car, and uh, drives to the end of the track first with a 755. Well, we all know John Zappier and Big Burnouts, and that was one, and the crowd absolutely love it. Zapier really knows how to turn it on for the crowd. In fact, I'd say John Zapier was the person who taught Victor Bray the benefit of a big burnout. Years ago, when his dinosaur, the HQ, was on the track, he was the king of burnouts. The funny car, a very different car to set up. The burnouts are a little smaller, but uh, John's racing attitude is just as serious. John making some movements inside the cockpit, putting the hands up, the crew directing forward. The car will be locked away. He's on a solo run. Comes out nice and uh, hard and fast. This compulsory qualifier is going to be a good one. A 6.57 at 322 k's. Well, another mighty small block coming to the track. This is Grant O'Rourke's LJ Tirana. A small block Chevy with a PSI supercharger. You'd better believe these guys are serious about making lots of horsepower. And Stu, what a big step up from last year for Grant and Debbie O'Rourke. There's Deb on screen guiding a Grant back in the car. Well, it's a big ask for them moving up from a nine-second Tirana to a car that had the potential eventually to run a six. We should certainly see some mid-sevens from the car. A double B altered production car. Now, this is his very final licensing pass in this machine. A new car, and it's considered that Grant is a new driver, having not driven a car of this caliber before. Down the track, nice and straight, and we have a new licensed supercharged car in Western Australia, and this looks like it's going to be it for him. And a good pass off the noise at about 1,200 feet, and Grant O'Rourke with an 865, that looked easy. Coming at you after the break, all the action from the Nitro Funny Cars. Back to coming at you, and Stewie Bond, this is what they've all come to see, the Performance Direct Nitro Funny Cars, and it is going to be a big meeting. Alan Dobson giving us the thumbs up, and Bondy, it is going to be one hell of a night's racing. Well, these two guys is uh, Lloyd Jones on screen right now. We saw Dobbs a moment ago. They have something to prove right now. They raced on Boxing Day last year, and it went 2-1 to the Southside car, and Alan Green on screen really wants to get a bit of revenge now. A lot of work going into both cars. The Southside team uh, almost rebuilding the car from the ground up, and Glenn Micras in town helping with the setup on this machine. While the green machine has been rebuilt in the last five days for the second time with a new clutch, new crank and a new combination. And uh, I'm absolutely sure Alan Green is going to throw everything he can at our track. The Southside car winding over, just checking oil pressure. We should see a signal from the driver and there it is. The crewman shuts the, uh, the starter motor off. Externally started engines, they have a massive high torque starter motor that bolts onto the front. And when they flash these cars, a little bit of methanol in the hat, and we're ready. Glenn Mike was in there with the boys from the Southside Engine Centre. And the man behind the wheel, Lloyd Jones. Lloyd, you raced on Boxing Day and uh, came out 2-1 against Alan Dobson. Have you made a lot of changes to the way you drive the car since that event? No, the car's basically the same. We're just uh, refining, Glenn's refining the tuning just to try and get it down the track one end to the other. Now, Lloyd, this is the first of two Nitro events this season at Ravenswood Raceway. How do you think today's going to set you up for the rest of the season? Well, hopefully, I mean, all we're really aiming at doing today is getting the car from one end to the other in one piece and going home with all the parts we come with. Um, we've got another meeting January 3, and we'll see how we go from there, whether we go to any tracks in the eastern states or not. And this is what the huge crowd has come to see, Nitro, funny cars side by side, and one of Terra Monster burnouts, and Stewie Bomb was down in the pits and caught up earlier with Alan Green. It's a big ask for you to put a Nitro funny car on Ravenswood Raceway only twice a year. Well, it is. You, you don't really get a lot of uh, track time, but um, you have to make the best of what you've got. And um, we've got a lot of new parts on the car tonight. Uh, a lot of courtesy thanks to uh, Lloyd and Graham Jones at Southside Engine Centre and uh, Bill Jackman at uh, Mandra Diffin Trans. He's done a tremendous job. A lot of machining and a lot, a lot of late hours this week to get our uh, new combination together. So we've got a new clutch in it and everything. So it's quite a bit of new stuff. So we're just hoping for the best. Outside engine center getting some assistance from a USA visitor and the top fuel champion, Glenn Micras.
Welcome back to WA, Glenn. We are so pleased to see you at Ravenswood, particularly helping out the Southside boys. Lloyd Jones is, I think, grown in the last 12 months driving a nitro car. Yeah, he's gotten a lot better. I mean, uh, there's no substitute for practice. We were out here last weekend, and the car performed real well. We were real happy with it. I mean, it ran almost 270 miles an hour and 560, so it was good. And it was just kind of a driver training program. It's been probably 12 months since we did this, so we need to be a little rusty. And what's the one thing you've had to say to Lloyd directly about top fuel cars compared with his alcohol experience? What is the one thing you keep saying to him over and over that makes him a good driver? Forget about what you learned before because it's a whole new school. Now, he's been really good. I mean, it's just actually all it is is really paying attention to everything because everything happens so much faster in a fuel car than it does in an alcohol car. So, I mean, but he'll be fine. Well, Glenn Marcus's experience is really paying off for Lloyd Jones. This afternoon in qualifying, we saw an outstanding pass from the car. Well, the car left nice and straight, then got out near the middle, but what a great pass of 554 at 456 kilometers an hour. Well, black tracking from three-quarter tracks, side by side. We now have 10,000 horsepower on the track. These are Nitro Bunny cars. Oh, and they're both are both turning the tires. Oh, look at this. Side by side, Bunny car action. Jonesy shuts it down and gets there with a 754 or 184. Stewie Bond, let's have a look at this in slow motion. Well, it looked like Lloyd got a good leave on Dobbo, but everything went wrong with Dobbs's car. Lloyd sideways on, turning the tyres, but Dobson has broken something big. A flame under the car, and Dobson has broken the green machine. Well, the Green Machine team will take the car back into the pit area and get into it mechanically. We'll find out from Alan Dobson what his ride was like and what he thinks might have gone wrong with the Green Machine. The burnout and whatnot was, was really excellent. The motor was right on temperature and the power was awesome. Um, when we put up in the stage, went on to the high side, I could feel the power was, was excellent. Nailed it and she was on a full rocket ship launch for that quarter third track and uh, then a big heap of oil smoke came out and I've seen a quick flash of flash of sort of flame and so I bought it instantly. Um, I'm thinking at this stage and hoping it was just an oil filter that's come loose. Um, there's no legs out the side of the block, no windows in the side of the block at this stage so um, hopefully we'll just sort of put some gaskets through it and we'll be back out there next run. Coming at you after the break, big blowers and burnouts from Top Coffee Eliminator. I'm back to coming at you, this is Top Crop Eliminator round one. Ian Brown is right on the edge of his third spot, second pass, and with a brand new sponsorship, this team could move that way very, very soon. Now, how have you settled in with the new sponsors on the car? Oh, great. Uh, GM Fonts came on board this season. Um, they're here tonight. Uh, we're hoping to run well for them. Uh, they're backing us all the way. Um, I think next year, and with our new engine combination that we're planning on putting together, we'll really come on strong. And hopefully we can chase the uh, top alcohol series over east. And, give these status a run for a moment. Well, Ian Brown sounding very confident. The car comes out strong and fast. Looks like it's going to be a good one for Brownie. He's on the noise. A 614 at 376 k's. Well, Grand O'Rourke fully licensed and ready to race. A small block Chevrolet in this Tirana. Yeah, we passed the license today. We ran a 750 at 192 mile an hour, which is now underneath both ends of the record. Um, so now it's time to start learning a whole lot about it and driving. Well, we we'll look forward to seeing a whole heap of laps from this car, well under his national record, and a chance for another dominant car to come out of the West. The competition in this round is going to be Trevor Morrison, and the crew standing very close to the car. That would indicate they're not going to make it to the start line. So Grand O'Rourke's got the solo pass. Morrison's given up on the start, no Rourke goes on a solo. He would have been informed by the starter, he is by himself. There is no need to wring the car's neck, he'll simply drive it through, and an 8.1 is good enough to get into the next round. Well, most disappointing for Trevor Morrison, jumps out of the car and the guys are shaking their heads. Peter Bersman with a big, strong burnout. Oh, what a monster, this car is hot. Peter Viersma is the national record holder in Double B Funny Car. His competition will be Roy Scott, the runner-up at our last event. Yeah, well, I was very surprised last meeting. Uh, we had our problems with the converter blow-up and a few other things, but yeah, well, um, we're, we're up for fourth in this meeting, so we're, we're hoping to, to try and get into the top four in the finals for Scott. Roy's crew are absolutely elated with their recent form. The car is working very, very well. 
but his competition is the quickest in the nation. Peter Viersma, a Chrysler big block, and it's a very unique machine. Roy Scott inside the cockpit, working overtime, now brings the car forward, ready to stage. Looks like Viersma is almost locked away, ready to go. Frank, I have a feeling that Peter Viersma's uh, engine combination will become the state of art and double B funny car in Australia. We're looking at a new generation of race car in the Castrol lane. Both cars out on a pair of clean greens. Burzma's starting to go at him at the half-strip distance and goes on with the business and runs through with a 682 at 354 k's. Another huge burnout from John Zapier and a radical change to this car for this event. Brothers Dorada still having a few little engine problems. Yeah, we're still having a problem uh, bending push rods. Yeah, we're sort of working on it. We've only done three so far. Uh, tonight, yeah. Well, Ricky's happy with the night's racing. The mouse is throwing things to the crowd, keeping the kids happy, and Barry Wood at the wheel wants to get the Tirana down the track very, very fast. Now we see John Zappier's car still has top alcohol funny car on the side. The car is set up as a double A funny car. Remove one magneto for the event, take a bit of weight out of the car. Running in a different class, which gives him a different handicap. John Zappier behind the wheel of the uh, Southside engine set of car. Barry Wood up alongside him. Wood with a big wheels up launch. Zappier's on the chase. Can he come around the outside? Looks like Wood's got some problems. Lots of smoke. Zappier out near the centre, but gets there with a 669 at 332 k. The Southside engine set of funny car fires to life. We spoke about the problems with the green machine. Alan, you gave Alan Dobson quite a ride this afternoon uh, in the car. He's raced against Lloyd Jones and a big sneeze, a bit of a fire, and things weren't happy with the green machine. Yeah, well, like I said earlier on, we were trying to uh, stop the engine from uh, over revving and blowing the clutch like it had done in the past. So we changed it to a uh, later model clutch, which pulls the engine down a little bit more than what the other clutch did. And worse luck, uh, we didn't have enough fuel pressure off the line. and. Uh, Took 1.8 seconds to turn it into a giant oxy torch and torch the hell out of the block and the heads and uh, so it's put a, put paid to us for the night. Well, disappointing for the green machine. They were really hoping to perform well. The pressure comes onto the Southside team. The Southside engine centre with Lloyd Jones at the wheel of this Nitro Funny Car will put on a show that our fans will not forget. Ah, oh, Stewie, what a run this afternoon. 5.54, 283 mile an hour. That's over 450 kilometres an hour. And the Southside boys are keen to do better. Well, I know the guys from the Southside went over to the green machine to find out if there was anything they could do, if there were any parts they could lend to the team to get them out there on the track. But unfortunately, it'll be a disappointing night for Alan Green and Alan Dobson. Final adjustments being made. Glenn Micros gets underneath the car and has a bit of a look. Starts to uh, make sure that everything is okay for Lloyd Jones, the pilot of this Nitro Funny Car. Well, the final thing he did under there, Frank, was to arm the clutch. The clutch has a pneumatic system. It engages itself uh, in periods of time down the track. As soon as he hits the noise, the clutch starts activating, and at half track, he should be locked one to one. And if the tyres don't smoke, we've got another fast pass. Lloyd is on a good lap, and he has got off the noise. He must have felt the car drifting towards the concrete wall, got back onto it, and then off again, and as easy as anything, a 671. Coming at you up to the break, the Performance Direct Finals. Welcome back to Performance Direct Finals time here on Coming At You. Let's start with Super Street. Alistair McClure in this little Jats, and a 308 Holden is the engine. And a tough campaigner, Alistair and Tim have been racing at Raven Good Raceway for quite a few seasons. But I guess experience would have to go to the Farrell car. Paul Farrell doing the driving, a first-year racer. But the Farrell family have been drag racing for about the last seven or eight years. Very close to the top end, and Al McClure holds on for the win with an 11.48. Modified eliminator sees Hank Robinson up alongside this man, Steve Raven, in the little altered. Steve Ravens, the state champion in Modified, swept all before him last season and got a win at the first event this season. Raven with a very, very good start. He's got a big lead on Hank Robertson. Robertson will be pushing the big block hard. Can the hot rod catch him? Raven gets there first, but it's broken out, going too fast. Brando Rourke really on the noise of what a big burnout. 
be happy with that one. Frank is really beginning to look comfortable in this car. An easy straight pass this afternoon to Larsons. He's right in the thick of competition now and a chance for him to really prove some points. The car has already gone quicker than his national record, faster than his national record. Now he needs to do it in competition. And the Golden State Championship could be a chance for him to rewrite those records forever. The car's locked away. Grand O'Rourke ready to launch. Comes out on a nice clean green. Keeps it straight. There's a problem with the car. He comes off the noise. Well, the car shook really hard as he went to shift to second gear. A lot of tyre shake. And I would say Grand has decided the better form of valour is to put the car away and save it for the Golden States. Big burnout from Peter Viersma. A double B funny car. An iron production motor. And alongside him with a full aluminium racing engine is Ian Brown, a top alcohol funny car. Both cars running in very, very different classes, different weight brakes, different horsepower outputs. And we'll see them racing on a staggered tree. The handicap will go to the double B funny car of Viersma, while this car will wait and do the chasing. Ah, oh, Stewie, this is going to be a hard race to pick. Handicap racing will always give the advantage to the racer who has a better reaction time and the team who can make more horsepower against competition in similar cars across the nation. Well, both these cars prepared to go. Ian Brown starting to move forward. Peter Versma's locked away and ready to race. Staging the car is absolutely critical, Frank. Both teams are happy. And Beersma with a good lead. The car moving around a lot. And Brownie doing the chasing with lots of horsepower. Can he catch him? Beersma holds on and gets it with a 678. The performance direct. Nitro funny car final. And unfortunately, it's going to be a solo. of the green machine earlier all sorts of problems with that car unfortunately it won't be back onto the track tonight but lloyd jones with a chance now to run the fastest funny car pass in australia glenn Micris is convinced this car will run a 540 or a 530 and if the track can hold it a 520 lloyd's on the noise the of flames are up and he's off it very quickly the car breaking loose on the start line heading for the concrete wall and lloyd jones making the choice to shut the car down are a disappointing end to a great day's racing. Well, that's it for this edition of Drag Racing Kalmanatcha. Join us next time when Southside Engine Centre present the Golden State Championships featuring round two of the Australian Top Door.